Well, members of the assembly will not be returning from their summer recess next week after a small number of confirmed COVID-19 cases at the Capitol. KCRA 3 political analyst and senior vice president of Randall Communications, Kevin Riggs, joins us for the Riggs Report. So, Kevin, do we know when they will return? At this point, we don't know, and uh, even the Assembly Speaker Anthony Rendon said this week that he doesn't know when members of his House will be allowed to come back to the Capitol to wrap up business for the end of the two-year session. Now, Anthony Rendon did say that they are working on a schedule that will allow for remote committee hearings and other business to minimize the number of people who are actually coming into the building. but. The big hang up for Capitol watchers is what happens to the actual voting on bills. The Senate has said that it would allow voting remotely, although they haven't done that yet. They said they would allow it, though. And the assembly takes the opposite view. They don't believe that remote voting would pass constitutional muster or a legal challenge. They say they won't allow it. So until lawmakers can physically come back to the building to vote on bills, uh, the question of what happens to those bills is up in the air. And of course, there are hundreds and hundreds of bills that are supposed to be dealt with between now and the end of session at the end of August. So, Kevin, we now know the November ballot in California will be crowded with 12 initiatives. What are some of the big ones? Yeah, a lot of homework uh, to be done by voters between now and November. But uh, yeah, a couple of, of measures really do stand out. First of all, voters are going to be asked in California to restore affirmative action programs in California. This is, of course, an issue tied to the national discussion on systemic racism. You'll recall that voters in California did away with affirmative action, uh, dealing with uh, contracting and hiring and college admissions when they passed Proposition 209 back in 1996, this new measure, Proposition 16, would simply do away with Proposition 209. And as expected, voters will decide whether gig workers are employees or independent contractors. This is a big issue. Yeah, and this one had been expected because uh, Uber and Lyft and DoorDash and some other companies had said last year that they were willing to put up $100 million to qualify a measure for the ballot. And in fact, that's what they did. It's designed to push back or challenge a, a law passed by the legislature, AB5, which essentially classifies gig workers as employees and not independent contractors. So this measure, which is uh, Proposition 22, it actually would, would say, that its app-based drivers would be exempted from that law would also allow some new benefits to be put in place, such as insurance uh, protections and wage protections. But yeah, that's going to be a huge, uh, big fight contest, very expensive between now and November. All right, Kevin, thank you so much. We appreciate your time. And Kevin does write a political blog. You can read it on the KCRE3 News app every Thursday.